Hello and happy Sunday, everybody. Nice to see you and thank you for joining Sandra Stamper Craft Studio. I'm just getting my camera ready and hopefully we're going to be good to go. Get that one there and that one there. Oh, come on. That one and that one and we're ready to go. Okay, so today, um, uh, yes, I think Facebook and YouTube are talking to each other now and that should be transmitting to both sides of the um, the network, if so to speak. Um, so everybody should be able to see. Um, it's been a swelteringly hot day. Do pop in the comments as to what you've been up to today because it's been really, really, really hot. Um, my studio is usually one of the coolest rooms in the house and today hi Rhonda you're first in today hi Shaz I have left the door ajar just just slightly so that the cats can just push the door and get in it does mean that we hear the other noises in the house so apologies for that if you can hear anybody else talking we just had a very rushed dinner so I hope I haven't got indigestion um, just trying to get done in time so just adjust that camera slightly and I'll get you across over there now and get you down on the table so today I'm going to be using the hi there Karen very hot down here you've done a crafty workshop ah oh, hi Pam it has been really really hot really really warm um, I will be going out I'm trying to get out um, out and some time to myself I learned a lot on Friday and I need to chill so um, I will try and get out. Um, I will only be going a little distance after my live tonight. So um, today I'm going to be, if you saw the um, preview come up, I'm going to be using Silly Goose. Okay, I'm not calling anyone else a Silly Goose. I'm just calling myself a Silly Goose um, because I think, yeah, I'm a bit of a daft turn, so aren't I? So I'm going to be using this one. But I do want to keep this one in your minds with the countryside corners. So I thought what I'd do is do a couple of techniques with the dies and how we can make the card bases. Okay. You've even had rain. Oh, good grief. It was, I posted a, I think it's gone live in my page. Hot in Blackpool, thunder yesterday. Oh, wow. Um, the, um, I, ironically today, you know how Facebook will come up and, and give you reminders of things that have happened in the past. I think it was seven years ago today. Um, we've only been in it eight years and my window at the back here going into the courtyard there's a roof and it was absolutely torrential rain chucking it down there and I could hear it through the window um, and I've posted that photo so um, I think that's gone live and I don't know if it was in the, the um, I think it's just on my private page I think so these dies considering I was a bit reluctant to get them I absolutely love them who said you've got great you've got that set Rhonda is I don't know if you've got the um, countryside ones or whether you've got your silly goose but hey I'm going to be playing with these today I'm not going to use the stamp so just that one I'm going to get those out of the way um, and silly goose lovely set okay it's just a standalone stamp set I'm going to get the catalogue out of the way as well I'm not in my usual desk I had a sale at the week uh, yesterday and everything everybody else has cleared away and all around the side of the room is all my tables that normally down the middle for classes. So I've left one of the other ones up and I've just plonked myself roughly in the same place. Um, anyway, so silly goose, we need to just get these stamps sorted. So I'm just going to go over again quickly what I do. I take away the flimsy piece and just discard that in my clear waste, which I recycle. And then all of these, Stampin' Up! have now started putting these onto the printing. So when they print it, we actually get all of these and they go in exactly the same place as what they've um, um, printed them. So you, when you find them on your stamp set, they're just going to pop on there. It doesn't take long at all. I just like to get them out of the way. Okay. This is just a fun set. I, I, I do now and again get a few of the funny ones. Um, we've, as you know, we haven't got any children. Um, and it's kind of one, if you've got youngsters in the family, it's kind of one that kind of it goes with everybody really. You can make something for everybody. So I thought I'd do some little, something with a thanks on it today. Um, there's the grass and there's the last one. Now this sheet here, the thicker one of the two, I used to um, not discard it. I used to put this into my acetate. I've got a sleeve for acetate and I would recycle this to do window cards um, or um, 
any yeah any little springy pieces you can cut strips and do springs um, all sorts of things and I would use that for something else also do inks on here and then smooch them so I thought I'd, I'd kept them now I've discovered when they start to lose their stick I'm just going to zoom you in a little bit further just a sec when they start to lose their stick um, they can be annoying they, they will start to fall off now if you haven't got time to just go and wash them straight away just warm soapy water under the tap will get some of that stickiness back I tend to let them air dry but if you're using it and you're in a class or anything I tend to now I put this back over the top so there we go they're on there and if I want one I will lift this up and just take out what I need okay so if I grab some blocks because I got I have an idea in my head it does make a change doesn't it so I think I'm going to use this one with a balloon but I don't think he's going to go Mr Goosey I don't think he's going to go on that one he might go on this one at an angle or I'll just use the big one so as I say said before if you let it relax on itself on it on the table and then just pop your block over the top it saves you stretching it and it getting it out of proportion so there's that one and I kind of like the birthday ones up there sending a big honking thanks so I kind of like that one I know it's a bit strange but they are um, silly goose after all I'm thinking it's yeah it's that one so I'll pick that one up onto my block and get that one ready we've got the balloon on there which is what I really wanted to do um, then I had another idea with these two a pair of them as well um, but we might come on to that on the next live so there we are we're prepped um, I have no idea what colour I'm going to use, so if you like to throw some colours out. I kind of thought, put these ones out at the moment. Um, I'm going to slide the inks out of the way. There we go. Um, I thought that this paper, bring the geese back in. I thought that the papers kind of lent themselves to something with nature. Um, I've got this beautiful one here. So I did think about whether that one might be good with that one or just to have a florally pattern I think I've got six inch pieces of everybody here um, we've got so, eat one of each of the patterns in this one Let's just flick through um, it's going to be a background behind everything else you know what that one might that's a bit more delicate to have that behind I might go with that one let me see I've got, there's only one other thing I was going to try, and I've got the, the big one here. I've not cut into this yet. Let's pop that on the floor. This panel here, in case anything on there is going to work better for us. This one is quite nice. I do rather like that one. Now, is that going to be the right size for a card base, I wonder? Just turning these over to see if I've got a full size base anywhere. I don't think I have today. No, they're all newish colours. No, okay, let's cut one. Let's cut something and see what we think. I've got the trimmers here. Oops, a baby. Oh, there they are. And get these out of the way. So my little pile here. I'm going to take one of this one to start with for Sky. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to go to the wild wheat, which is in my stash. So I want to have this card as a tent card. Okay, this is how I'm going to start off. Okay, I'm going to start with the whole card base. I've got two different ways of showing you this. So um, do stay tuned a little bit longer because you might learn something you might not have seen before. It works on um, lots of different sized eyes. But this one here, oh, look at that panel on there. I think that could work really nicely. The trouble is with these panels, if we cut them with large scissors, we won't have what I call a true straight edge. So I'm just going to cut them like this, but I'm going to just trim the edges off with the guillotine just to give that extra straight edge. Okay. That one off there. Anybody else use this whole sheet yet? Because I'm interested to hear. So this is my panel. There's my base card. Get you out of the way. So that's kind of going to go on there. So this is the one I've cut and this one. So I will place this in the trimmer. 
and I'm just going to slice off the tiniest, minutest edge just to get that little hair hairline. Might well be on that side, I'm right handed. And then the same down here, just to make sure that that is actually straight. There is a bit of a wedge on that, so I did that well. There we go. So that could be my base card, but that's just finding the actual starting point. Let's move that. So now what we're going to do is take those dies. I'm going to take that biggest die, the biggest one on here. Okay. Now on this card, we're going to place this. Sorry, I'm a bit. That's a bit, a bit high. This one, I'm going to place this one just over the edge. Okay, so on here, I'm going to tape that so it's just, you can just see the blade. So it's not the, edge, the cutting edge. So it's not actually going to cut that seam at all. I could actually go a little bit higher, but if I just lay that just to the edge there. Now, where did I have? I've been pricing up some more sale stock today. And I did have my tape. You're going to have to bear with me because I think it went over the other side. Look. So I wound this in because it was getting a little bit dry. So let's just tape this one down. Two pieces of scotch tape. So we're going to have that literally just hanging over the edge. You could bring that down a little bit if you like. Then you might end up with a couple of strips over there. You know, thrifty Sandra. Okay, and then one down here just to hold that in place. Now, because this is going to be cut, it's going to cut two layers. So we need to pass that through more than once. So if I bring up the machine, beyond the cutting cutting plate here. I will stand them slightly at an angle. Okay, I'll bring you back out again. I think they're too close now. Um, so we're at an angle like this so that the die um, doesn't just, the machine, the rollers don't just jump um, and have a whole straight edge together. So I'm going to run that through once. I haven't got the shim in. That is far too easy. <gasps> I've got them all on the table already. So let's take that out and put the shim in. There's the shim. Shim has to go in for the die cutting. Okay, make sure I'm lined up and I've got no ridges. There we go. I'll cut this one through. What is the name of that blue? That is Azure Afternoon. It's one of the new ones. Can you see that one there? There's the code to order the pack of card. Um, it's... Uh... Hi, Angela. No, you're not late at all. I'm on a different table. I'm on my old buffet tables. So I have got a bit of a wobble going on here. Um, I'm now going to take that out and I'm going to pass it through again. I didn't come back the other way because I've got my fold here. Now, you know, we say about the embossing folders, you have to take the fold through first. So I just want to cut it the same way again. And hopefully the first pass will have cut through the top layer and then the second pass should cut through the second layer. That's my theory anyway. So if I turn this over, you will see that we have got a, a, a cut through there. It's not 100% because I've got to take the tape off. If I remove the tape, I think we are there. Because like I said, the first one will go through the first layer, but the blade is still in place. So when it goes through the next layer, it is um, it then cuts the second layer. So just carefully remove your tape. Okay, I store that on the side of the machine here for the next card, the next time I need to use it. Those strips will go in my scraps, you know my lovely scrap boxes. There's just one bit of tape left on here. So take that one off as well. Okay, we are going to use the machine again. So I just stand that to the side. So here is my card. We actually have a hinged edge at the top there. Okay, what's that? So the blue... The boho, boho is one of the new colours, yes. Just back from walking the dogs. Oh, bless. No, no worries. We've not done much. Just lining up the dies just over the edge of that card. So you have that just over the edge. Um, and these do give you, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. There is a very slight little bevel on here. Can you see that? Around the edge. Very pretty dies. Why did I waste this? Why didn't I get them on the first pre-order? Okay, so there is my card. You can have it that way on or you can have it that way on. Okay, 
So I don't know if that's the colour I want to use yet, which is the sad thing. Um, so I'm putting that back on my magnet. Now from there, I'm going to, this is the stamp that I want to end up using. I'm taking it off his earth block. So this is what I'm going to place in the middle. Okay, so that would need something to have a die. Oh, I just move your handle out of the way. Come back on. Um, we'd need to have a die that is going to be, that's not really big enough. So we're going to go to that one. It's a bit too big now, isn't it? Okay, let's see. That will go all the way over to the top. So let's work with that one. So I wanted to see some of the background. And then I wanted the next one up, which will be this one, to have a slight layer to it, okay? So they're the two we're gonna need next. So we're gonna have a basic white. A piece of that, I don't know where that's from, but that's a different shade of white. It's a thick. Mm -hmm. I did have the normal as well. Where are you hiding? Underneath. The thick I tend to only use for the actual base cards. I don't use thick for layers at all. So this one's in there. So I'm going to take that one. So the white layer is going to be this one here. Okay. So we're actually going to stamp on there and have him. And then this one's going to be in my next layer. Now go back to the paper that we had here. I don't know whether I want to have the lemon lolly. I like, I do love wild wheat. This one is one of my favourites. So I think I'm going to try it with that one and see how that looks. It'll go on the floor. Because I haven't got the two legs of the IKEA desk. I, the two legs, they're just a little bit apart like so. And I stack my cards and my papers up between them. Which is really handy because it's easy to access. It's easy to read. I haven't got that tonight. I've got a no, foot and a half gap. So I'm going to cut that down there and just rough cut that. All goes on the floor for now. So I'm going to cut that one. This one I prefer to stamp first. Okay, so I'm going to put him back on his block. Okay. And we are going to... Um, what ink pad shall I use? <laughs> memento. I could use Memento. Um, but I'm just going to try something else with you. Just a sec. Memento again for now. Okay, so I'm going to just stamp him all over. Oh, and this is a jiggly table, sorry. That's a new one for you, Helen. Which is that? The Azure. Oh, I love Azure. It's a bright, it's kind of a replacement, I think, for a substitute. I don't know if that's got all of that stamp. Yep. I think this is a replacement for a slightly lighter shade of um, Pacific Point because they took away Pacific Point and they've given us this one. So there is kind of a bit of a difference there. So then this one is the die that's going to cut round my little goose. Okay, so I'll just take that up the edge there. Discard that on the floor. We'll need it later for the sentiment. So if I get those two out of the way, I'm going to cut these two layers, bring back the cutting machine, and then we can get that off the table. So we'll have one here, again, at an angle. Okay, so you can pop that one over there further. And this one. We use those two pieces of tape that I saved earlier. And where we want to sit him. Do we want to sit him in the middle or at the bottom? Wherever you fancy. Okay, one there. And one over there. Plate is here. Now, I asked someone a question the other day. I know one of them's on here with regards to... Oh, Zanna, your, um, the Azure is your favourite at the moment, is it? I asked somebody about watercolouring. And how many of you, pop in the comments, how many of you do watercolouring? Whether it be with the watercolour pencils or with the, um, the ink 
on a block or a piece of acetate. There's lots of different ways you can watercolour. Okay, so that's just taken those off and I can get this off the table now. Put you back down on the floor. Go that way. And now we can start our card. So with this one here, we have this layer and I'm tempted to... Oh, that won't work, will it? Ah, you see, there we go. We've gone straight away. You've never tried it, it makes you nervous. No need to be nervous. If This would be lovely going that direction. My problem is we want to do it that way on. So I could have him over to the side, but he's a bit too big now. So I'm not so sure now. Because what I was going to do was actually take him this way on. That panel won't work now, will it? We can go this way to a certain degree, can we? Uh, you see. And you see, you like me showing you tricks, don't you? Okay, so we will solve this problem. The, the paper is not big enough, okay? Not an issue. Let me prove to you what we can do. Bring the machine back. We have the biggest one here. Okay. And we will take this, we will get as much out of this as we can. All right, so we're gonna tape that down. Little piece, skinny bit there, tiny bit there. We'll have to go square this time because, but there's a gap there, so that's all right. We'll take as much as we can. Anybody got any guesses as to what I'm gonna do? You know me, where there's a will, there's a way. Okay, look. There we go. That looks a little bit silly now, doesn't it? Now and again, you do some water colouring. Okay, so that's the bottom half. Right, now... We can't really, can we? No. Would we get much of that in there? We could. I was hoping that was going to work, but it might not. We might have some sunshine coming in the corner here. If I don't have the sky bit, if I just have... No. I'm trying to fix a problem here, guys. Bear with me. I know I'm mad. I'm the silly goose, you see. So there you go. We go back to the silly goose. Stick that down. Stick that down. Because I'm concentrating down here. I can't see the comments. <laughs> you don't watercolour much. Yes, but badly. Who said that? Lizzie. Oh. Okay, well, I've got some news for you then. Just try to read the comments. There you go. There you go. Okay, I've got some news for you. July is National Watercolour Month. Did you know that? So, guess what? I'm going to be featuring watercolouring a lot. So, if you've got watercolouring tools, you want to come and join me, then please just join in and we'll go through some bits together. Now this looks a little bit strange on here, like so. This could be the sun coming in the corner. And what I'm gonna do is actually have a little border coming across there. The blue will, will do, join on. But I think if I did that, get those out of the way, and then this is gonna come on here separately. Okay, like so. I'm going to join that, bridge that gap with make a join that isn't there. So I'm gonna do a faux join because I'm going to put a strip of our blue because we've lost our base now because of what I'm doing. So if we have a piece of our scraps, you know I like to use scraps. Get rid of that. We've got a big piece along the end here. So those of you who don't know, I've, I line these up on the lines on a trimmer. Um, and you've also got this ridge in here, so you've got a little piece there if you just want a, a narrow strip. That's what I'm going to do for now and get rid of those again. I might have them actually make that a little bit narrower. So now I eyeball a little bit and I just work to this, making sure it's a nice straight line. Okay, it's about that wide. There we go. We've got, we've got two different strips there to think, well, now, which one would we like? So we could put a little dainty one. This is like a faux ribbon. 
This I would look at being as the sun, sun shining through. Or we've got a little bit of a wider one, like so. So we can take some of that sunshine out. And then these can go over the top. It kind of lessens that corner piece. But it makes one panel do more than we, what we would like it to. So it's up there, and that's the sun shining in the corner. I think that kind of works. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take these down. Now, when I cut this, you can't see this. I do think on my feet, Gillian. Yes, I have to. <laughs> yep. So this was a smooth side because that had the clean plate on the top. I can feel under here that this is a little bit rougher because that was on my cutting plate. So I'm going to use this side to cover it up. Okay, so the back is nice and smooth for the back of the card. Okay, so let's grab some Tombow. Okay, we're going to stick that one down. Grab my tweezers. I did get them out somewhere. Do they kind of have an idea? So we've changed it twice now because I was meaning to do it the other way. You can do the same with these dies, like we've hinged at the top there. So we've got a card that's going to stand like so. You could equally hinge at the top here. So you've got a hinge going that way on. Okay, so we're going to go a little bit wider on here. We're going to pop this down. Okay. In fact, you know what? I've got my tool here, my letter opener. I think I'd rather have more of this one showing. So because this Tombow's only just gone down, I'm being very daring. I'm lifting this slightly. I want this one to be underneath, okay, under there. So we hide more of that yellow. And then I'll stick the other one down again. I hope you're keeping up with me. You just say, call me a silly goose afterwards. Okay, there we go. So that one's down on the top, and I'm just going to run some more Tombow along here. Just along that edge. There we go. And smooth it down. There will be a little bit of glue come out. That's not a problem, because we're going to um, pop this across. Okay, again, there's a smooth side and a bumpy side. So I'm going to pop that across there. Cover as much of that join as I can, as much of the sun this side as I can. So we'll snip that off there. There is another one I'm going to show you quickly. I won't make the card up, but I'll make the base card for you. So do stay tuned to the end because it's quite a quick process. But it will get you getting more use out of these dies. It works perfectly with these dies. And it wasn't until I was thinking about techniques like this that I thought I've got to get them now. I really must. So I'm just lining that up along there. I've taken a snip on there just to take it away so I didn't put too much glue on it because otherwise you'll go glue all the way out the edge there. Turn it over and snip that tiny little piece off there. Okay, it's in the bin because it's gluey. All right, let's get those out of the way. And there we have our base card. Okay, so there we are ready to put our layers on. So this one here is going to be, we've got the wild wheat. Those layers are quite a gap between them, aren't they? That is that one, and that is the next smallest. Yeah, he is the next smallest. You can see the size in that margin on there, the, the border. So if you wanted him to be smaller, you could do him like so, and then have the, just some sponging, some ink around the edges. But we'll stick to my guns at the moment. I'll pop him on flat like so. You can still see, it's like a, look, look like that as being like a wheat field. You can tell I was a farmer's daughter. My walk yesterday, those of you who saw it, around the fields, just trying to get out and take some time out to de-stress, think, and yeah, have some me time. Um, they've got some wheat, this field behind it used to be asparagus, um, but they've got, I think they've got two different sorts of wheat in there because it's, um, one's kind of like the, the ears of the wheat are there already, and the other one is, is quite behind, so I think one's a wheat winter, winter one. So I'm going to pop that on there like that, but I am going to raise that up and then we're going to have a greeting. So we'll take this off. This was the waste from around the edge of my, um, my frame and my memento ink. So I'm going to just stamp that up there. It's the first time I've inked it. So I'm going to go up the side here just to test. Yes, that's going to be good. The 
first time you ink it up, it just sometimes it's got like deposits from the factory, the processing on it. Go, leave that one a little bit longer. And there we have. So it depends on what we want to do with that sentiment. But for now, I'll take the snips and get rid of the rubbish. And we'll keep that there. Okay, look. So coming back to the water colouring. I won't do it where I was going to put it because I'm going to use that. You could actually tap your ink pads onto your, your plates because I'm going to use them again in a, a short while. I won't do it on there. I'm going to go back to my stamp set. And you know what I said about the um, acetate that sits at the top here? You can use that as an ink pad. I'm not going to emboss today, so I'm going to lay that on there. So there's the, the acetate sitting there. And then... I'm going to take, we don't need a lot because the goose is white, isn't it? Um, we might put the blue for the, um, the balloon. Okay, so this is our lemon lolly. We have two ways of doing this. We can squeeze this, I think I did it the other day, and get some into the lid. And the other way we can do it is to tap this onto our acetate. So if I just do a little bit just to show you on that one. Just get my water brushes again. I haven't got a tissue with me today, have I? Kitchen rolls by the tea bar. Sorry. So, using a piece of acetate, if you can't get, if you, if you, you um, need quite a bit of dexterity in your fingers to nip hard enough to get the ink on there. If you haven't got that, then you can do it um, this way. Just take, I don't want the fat one, sorry. Put in one. This one. I always squeeze these through to get the nib wet so we've got some moisture in it and then you're just going to pick up that ink on here okay so you can add some more water you can squeeze that out a little bit mix it in have it as dark or as light as you like and this is where I use my kitchen roll here just to take some of that out so I'm going to start off I want it quite concentrated so I will do this one the balloon is going to be in our blue okay this is our Whisper White card. I will be using for next month, I will be showing you the, um, the proper watercolour paper. You get better results on there. But this still works nicely. I've got quite a dark piece in the middle there. Okay, and then if you pick up very, very dry your brush and pick up some very, very concentrated areas, you can just paint these hat if you have your glasses on and you can see where the lines are. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here and do the, where those little lines are. Okay, keeping the brush nice and dry and just paint a couple of lines in there and then maybe just the little tassels around the top of his hat in there okay can't really see that much and then for his I'm going to use the yellow for lemon lolly for a few features like his beak okay I'm going to get that quite dark okay it's a nice dry brush so it doesn't dilute and in the middle of the color Okay, and then maybe his feet. They probably would be a, an orangey yellow colour. I'm using this neat on here. No water. There we go. And I'm not looking at my comments, sorry. There you go. You don't need a lot of colour in there. I'm just going to go in the top of his hat, his little hat there with the yellow in between. I'll bring it up to the camera and show you in a sec. There we go. Glasses off, lid on. Okay, ink out of the way. I'll bring that up to show you. So there you go. So I have got a little bit of a blue blue hat on there, but I can make him darker. Not hat, a balloon. Okay. If I'd have used the watercolour paper again today, that would have smooched a lot better. You know when I say to you about um, blending and things like that, you dab your paper first and take the excess off? It's a bit like that with this. Okay, so clean my brush. And there we go. So that's got the acetate on it now. I just did that just to show you. You don't have to squeeze the lids if you don't if you haven't got resources to. You can use an old tile as well. Um, um, I had my old house. I had a, a plum a tiler in the village, and I was in the pub one day, and I just happened to ask whether anybody had got any tiles left over from a, a job. And the next day, I got home from work, and he'd left me a whole stack of them which was very, very kind of him. 
Um, I'm just going to turn this over. He should be dry already, but I'm going to turn him over onto there. So yeah, so I've got some tiles that I use in classes and things. So quite handy if you know somebody who's having a bathroom fitted. Just keep a couple of tiles handy. Okay, I'll catch up with the comments in a sec. Look, there you go. Where are we? Wild wheat is my, yeah, gorgeous colour. I love it. Ha, <laughs> thank you. So just put four of those on and then one in the middle. There we go, pop that away. There you go, all five of them in one go, that was good. So they're going to come on here. It's going to come into the centre. For me, that's quite a wide layer between those. Um, but I think the colours are all there, aren't they? Um, so that's that. And then what's I going to do? Oh, the greeting. The greeting's going to just come sitting off the edge there. And we're going to go around the edge um, of those. So you saw me fussy cut the other day. We're on the greeting. This one I'm just going to take um, tram lines either side. So again, I've cut one straight line just in front of the top of the greeting. And I'm going to pop this in the trimmer here. Another tram line at the bottom. Now, if you want to do slanted lines, if you like, just to do something a little bit different, if you slant one side and you can then slant the other, or you can snip the ends in, it's up to you. But I'm gonna come along here. If I cut that way, then I turn this over. This is the piece I've cut off. I kind of want to do the same cut on this end. So I need to have that coming along here at that same angle. Okay, so I can just line that up to be the same angle on here. Tram lines with the edge of the card. So I know I'm laying it in there correctly. I can just about see that straight line down there. So I think that's going to be about right. And then I've got my tram lines. So you kind of look using the opposites, except that's gone a little bit longer, a bit more white than I'd like to see. Shave another little bit off. And there we have our tram lines either side. Okay, just to give a little bit of a change for my snipping in the corners. There you go, and he can come on. I think the greeting's gonna be better up here. Okay, because there's a bit of white there, isn't there? Okay, but I can't let him just stay there like that. I need my blue ink. Yep. Now in the absence of a dauber or a sponge, what you can do, I'm gonna bring it up to the camera, you can just stroke that edge along your stamp, just very, very gently. You only want a little edge on it and you don't want to smudge what's there. So please don't cut your ink pad. And I say that because I see my ink pads done in a class afterwards. So all you're doing is very, very gently just stroking that on there and I will not smudge that ink. In fact, you can put it in the tweezers, look. And then just very gently just stroke it. You're not cutting it, you're just stroking it a bit. Okay, turn it again and you can do the same with the last side. Just stroke it very, very gently. Okay, and if I hold that up there against my hand, can you see, it's probably a bit close, can you see that? There is an actual edge to it. I've got a piece of white paper to kitchen roll. Can you see there's a, a blue edge around there? Okay, so that just, and that ink will be dry by now. So that's just going to come over the edge there like so. Got just the perfect place to put a little gem there as well. So this end will be flat and this end will need a dimensional. Get a mini one on there or a piece of the edges. So I'll snip one of those out. Put one on this end. Okay, that should be the, yeah, that's the end of it. So take that backing off. I'm gonna put some Tombow on this end. Just a little tiny bit. Pick it up via the that Stampin' Dimensionals. And then we're gonna have him hanging off the edge. So the dimensional that's on this end will keep that edge showing. Okay. So we've got the little line above there as well. We've got that little bit sticking out. So we've got some different layers going on, which is nice. Um, a couple of dimensionals, and I'll show you the other cut for doing this another very, very simple way. So it has to be the clear ones, doesn't it? With the colours I've got today. 
Hi, Wendy. So I'm going to put, because there's an, a piece of white there, I'm definitely going to put a gem in there and just another couple of others. Just dotted around. One on there. And baby will go here. So he's virtually finished, and there's that little card. How do you like him? Just for a bit different, and a shaped card, which is really, really easy to do. Just bring that back in. So you can actually see that um, there like so. You love this card, oh bless you. Now, another quick way of doing it, um, with any die, I mean, this works lovely with this because it's got some nice straight edges on it, and you can do it with a straight, so you could have a tent fold that way. Okay, so let's just put that out of the way for, for a moment. I'm going to bring the die cut machine on. Like I said, I'm not going to make the whole card. I'll just show you the process how to do it yourself. And we will bring up a piece of that. The biggest die. Unhitch you there. Oh, your jammy little thing. You can go on that. Big scissors. So this time I'm going to cut two single pieces. Okay, at an angle because I can, and pop that through. Okay, take you out, bring you back. I'll cut another one. Because these are new colours, I haven't got many scraps of them yet, so I'm going to have to just cut into these. Okay, rough cut again, so you don't get the scratchy lines. That one. Good for using up scraps if you can do it with two separate pieces. Okay, and if you're a bit nervous about leaving that folded edge and you think this one might actually be easier for you. So once we've got two pieces, Okay, you get the debris out of the way. You've got two identical pieces, so you're going to have a front and a back. We need our trimmer. Okay, now on one piece, we're going to make a score line across here. Now, this one has got the very obvious plate point to have because you've got a point there and a point there. You could have this any width that you want, but because of the style of the card, I'm going to use my trimmer as a straight line and I'm going to, and I'm going to score through those two points. Okay, just on one of them, just the one. Okay, so there's a score line. So when these two cards are put together, you're gonna to put them front to back and you're gonna have this one is now going to be your fold. So we'll just crease on there, bone fold of the edge. So this is actually the inside of your card and we're gonna attach those two together like so and you can see how that makes our card. It can stand up like so. Okay, so we just take the Tombow that has... What's it? I'm done with the Tombow. <laughs> oh dear, silly goose. Put it away anyway. Put it back over there. The lid is there and the... T <laughs> I put it in the bin. Why did I do that? There you go. It's just for me to be silly goose today, isn't it? So just clean that nib and I'm going to put my adhesive on the folded edge here. Okay, just on that piece. All right, and now you're going to put this one on top of it. Okay, and bring those two pieces together. Press down firmly on the edge. Like so. And as you know, Tombow will fix very, very quickly. And there is our hinged edge. So from the side view, there's the front, so this is nice and flat. And here on the back panel, we have to stand up like so. Okay, does that make sense? Anybody still with me? Okay, so then on the inside of your card, you have a panel there to write on. Okay, I really love that way of doing it and it works for anything, even a circle. You can score across a circle, any shape you like. Just score across at a, a suitable point. Okay, so there's our two cards. That's how to make the other one. This is how to actually have the hinge along the edge of the die. Okay, so that's my two cards. Just showing you two different ways of making that base. So I hope you like that um, transformation and the two switches we had to do. I think we got there and I think we did it all right. Okay, so there you go. 
um, you like that way too. There we go, Maxine. It's easy to do and it will work with any shape dies, whatever you've got. If you've got any scallops and rectangles or literally any shape, just try it. And if you do do it, excellent idea. Thanks, Rhonda. Um, if you do do it, then please just pop them in the post down the bottom. Just show me what you've done. Okie doke. So I'll bring it back to me and take that off, bring it back over and I will say cheerio and I will, I can't wait to get my hair cut tomorrow. I've got my colour being done on my hair. It's too heavy and it's just straight. So yeah, sorry for my messy hair and my grey, my grey's on the side. So yeah, there's lots of reasons why they're there. Um, it's different. Thanks, Sandra. Yeah, thanks ever so much for joining me and I will be back again on Wednesday. Okay, 